In this short video, I am going to demonstrate how the station stone's rectangle was set out. There were once four standing stones referred to as the station stones, so positioned at Stonehenge, that if they were to be joined by straight lines, then they would form an almost perfect rectangle. This rectangle was set out at Stonehenge sometime between 2620 and 2480 BC. Importantly, this rectangle has been central to most of Stonehenge's astronomy. The term the four stations was first coined in 1922 by Herbert Stone. The concept being that one viewed an astronomical alignment when standing behind one station stone and looking towards the direction of another station stone. Certainly the astronomy still works today. Here is an image I took on the vernal equinox in the year 2000. I am standing behind station stone 93 looking towards the eastern horizon where we can see the equinox sun rising just on the outer edge of the Sarsen stone circle at Stonehenge. Interest in the rectangle's astronomy began as far back as 1846 when Edward Duke first recorded his observations. He noted that the midsummer sunrise could be seen when standing behind station stone 92 and looking towards station stone 91 and six months later the midwinter sunset could be seen from behind Station Stone 94 and looking towards Station Stone 93. Sixty years later, in 1906, Sir Norman Lockyer added further astronomical alignments to the rectangle. Lockyer proposed that when the people stood at Stonehenge's geometrical centre and looked towards the direction of Station Stone 93, they would have witnessed the sunset on about the 6th of May and again around the 8th of August. Then, when they looked in the opposite direction, they would see sunrise about the 5th of February and again around the 8th of November. Lockyer thought that these dates were important for the prehistoric communities to organise and schedule their farming year. Sixty years after Lockyer, Peter Newman, an amateur astronomer, was the first to add lunar alignments to the astronomy of the Station Stone's rectangle. In particular, standing behind Station Stone 94 and looking towards Station Stone 91, one would see a moonrise at a particular point on the horizon, a point which the moon returns to every 18.6 years. The sight line also works the other way round for the corresponding setting moon, but one has to stand behind Station Stone 92 and look towards Station Stone 93. Also during the 1960s, a professor of astronomy, Gerald Hawkins, was to use an early IBM computer to plot a staggering 14 alignments associated with the astronomy of the station stone's rectangle. Why the four station stones stood in such a rectangular formation is a question seldom asked. Nor is it known how these four stones were originally set out with such precision. Indeed, Professor Richard Atkinson tells us that even today, the setting out of the Station Stone's rectangle would baffle the most experienced surveyor. The Station Stone's rectangle presents us with a big challenge. How can we explain how such a complex formation was set out, especially by people who were pre-literate and leave behind no written plans or schematics? One method which I will demonstrate in this video is to use experimental archaeology, for which I will need two things. First of all, you need a large field in order to set out the station stone's rectangle. Also, I need to measure the sun shadow at midday in order to identify the direction of true north. We're now going to set out a large circle with a radius of 141 feet 9 inches. Once we've set out that circle, we will then identify the cardinal points on that circle. The four station stones sit upon the same circumference line as the Aubrey Hall circuit, which we know to have a radius of 141 feet 9 inches, hence the measurement for the length of rope we used for the rope experiment. So what we've done so far is we have used the sun shadow midday to identify the direction of true north. 
We've also set out a large circle with a radius of 141 feet 9 inches. Here we use a simple line of sight to set out a line in the direction of true north so that we can identify the north cardinal point on the large circle. And here we use a simple line of sight to set out the south cardinal point on the large circle. The method you see here is how we identified the east and west cardinal points on the larger circle. We borrowed this technique from the ancient Romans who would stand along a north-south line and raise their arms at right angles to the line, thus pointing in the directions of east and west. The next step is now to put in place one of the station stones and the stone we're going to put in place is stone number 91. Here is a geometrical explanation of what we are doing. We fold the 141 feet 9 inches length of rope into half which gives us a length of just over 70 feet. We stand at the east cardinal point of the large circle and set out a second circle. Where the second circle crosses the large circle at the southerly point we place station stone 91. We now repeat the same procedure at the west cardinal point on the large circle. But this time where the second circle crosses the large circle at its northerly point, we then place station stone 93. And here is a geometrical explanation of what we are doing. Our next step is to set out station stone 94. So we take the 141 feet 9 inches length of rope and fold it into 4 or 1 quarter giving a length of just over 35 feet long. We stand at the north cardinal point on the large circle and set out a smaller circle. Where the smaller circle crosses the large circle at its westerly point, we place station stone 94. And here is a geometrical explanation of what we are doing. We now repeat the same procedure from the south cardinal point on the large circle, but this time where the second circle crosses the large circle at its easterly point, we then place station stone 92. And here is a geometrical explanation of what we are doing. Once we had set out the four station stones, we used a white marker machine to plot on the ground the shape of the rectangle, using line of sight to keep our lines straight. We have now set out the station stone rectangle, so the big question is, how successful were we in setting out the rectangle? To help me answer that question, I'm going to use two sources of information. The first source of information is to use orientation data taken from Professor Gerald Hawkins' book, Stonehenge Decoded. The second source of information is to use GPS. In this clip I am using GPS to mark the positions of the four station stones. Professor Hawkins tells us that the azimuth between station stone 91 and station stone 92 should be 229 degrees, which in fact matches our GPS readings. Professor Hawkins also tells us that the azimuth between station stone 91 and station stone 94 should be 320 degrees, which again matches our GPS readings. In conclusion, we were able to set out the station stones rectangle using rudimentary methods, which we believe were not only available to the Neolithic communities, but that these same communities were also capable of practically performing the methods you have seen in this video. But what do the results of this experiment mean to the astronomy of the station stones rectangle? Well, certainly, the experiment does not invalidate the astronomical theories at all. Rather, it helps to explain how the people could have used practical geometry on the ground 
to demonstrate how the cosmos moved across the skies above them. But I will have more to say about astronomy in prehistoric Britain in a future online video. Thank you for watching.